My name is Megan Coneybeer, and I'm the technical agronomist for Front Range Biosciences. I've been farming hemp since 2019, and I'm pursuing my dissertation in cannabis and hemp production from NC State University with the Alternative Crops and Organics Unit, and we're based out of Western North Carolina. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we at Front Range are producing superior genetics to benefit growers in the United States. Unfortunately, hemp has been um, illegal in the United States for approximately 80 years, and this prohibition of cannabis production has caused a lag in the development of stable genetics. And so what we're finding in the hemp industry early on is that growers are producing things, specific varieties that are not turning out to be the variety that they believe they were starting with. They're seeing chemotypic and phenotypic inconsistencies. They're seeing production inconsistencies in terms of resistance to pests, um, vulnerability to disease. And uh, as a result of this lack of genetic stability, you know, Front Range has chosen to view this as, a, as an opportunity and started to develop reliable solutions for cannabis growers in the form of a world-class genetic breeding program and stable genetic production so that growers can produce something and be confident that what they're putting in the ground is what they're getting out at the end of the season and that whatever those varieties are, are produced consistently and stably with uh, high quality performance characteristics. Um, within our genomic breeding program, we're expanding varieties and we're regionally optimizing these varieties of hemp plants to ensure that growers can produce them successfully regardless of where they're located within the United States. There have been several recent breakthroughs in hemp genetics and the reason, one of the largest reasons for these breakthroughs is that ingenuity right now is absolutely paramount. We're seeing breakthroughs bringing uh, a new era of sustainable farming and highly efficient farming practices, specifically organic production, uh, biodynamic production, and also alternative and innovative production methods that are allowing growers to experiment with hemp production and figure out what works for production in their region. Um, because hemp has been re-legalized in the United States for such a short period of time. Every grower in the U.S. is equally experienced and inexperienced, and it's the first time in memory where growers are able to really define how a crop is produced and establish a foundation of sustainable and efficient farming practices. Um, these ex advancements that we're experiencing now in hemp production will exponentially redefine standard, standards for agriculture because we're seeing an industry now based on foundations of sustainable ag and, and organic production rather than sustainability and organic being introduced into an established industry and trying to shift a paradigm. When we're talking about breakthroughs in hemp breeding, uh, the foundation of this is, is plant breeding in general. And when we're talking about traditional plant breeding, the objectives are to increase production, uh, which could be yield, um, plant size, plant shape, quality, um, quality of the plant overall. We also like to see um, bred in resistance to pests and diseases. So plants that can survive in a wide variety of soils and climates, survive a wide variety and a wide intensity of exposures to different diseases and different pests. And we're also looking at novel or exotic variety development. In the case of hemp, these could be your minor cannabinoids like CBG um, or optimized CBD production with total THC compliance at finish, as an example, where you could grow a plant to finish for optimal CBD and optimized um, minor cannabinoid production while still maintaining total THC compliance overall for that variety. When we're looking at traditional plant breeding, um, in general, we're selecting for advantageous traits. And advantageous traits uh, allow us to figure out which plants to keep, which varieties to keep, and which plants might not be successful in production environments in the U.S. So things that are evaluated are yield, um, so how much flower per plant is produced, how much biomass per plant is produced, um, concentrations of minor cannabinoids versus concentrations of THC. Uh, we also look at overall plant quality. Does the plant grow well? Is the plant structurally stable? Uh, can it sustain the weight of flower if the plant is fully developed? Um, all of those things in, inform us as to the final quality of the plant. We're also looking at ease of production. So 
does a plant um, establish quickly? Can it be produced economically without a huge amount of input from the grower or excessive amounts of input beyond what you would reasonably expect for a hemp crop? Is the plant tolerant to environmental stresses? If there's drought, if there's excessive humidity, if the light intensity changes um, and increases the temperature of the soil, can the plant handle you know, those, those environmental changes? We also evaluate resistance to pests. So if a plant is um, living under a disease or plant or stress from pests or disease, can the plant resist those things? Can it survive? Can it um, thrive? Can it overcome those pressures? And if it does, does it impart um, advantage, you know, advantageous traits to the yield or is the yield damaged or reduced by those um, pest influences? We also in hemp look for chemotypic and phenotypic consistency. So if you're selecting a variety of hemp to produce and you look at a COA and are given numbers that exist under best management practices, does that variety consistently produce that chemotype in a wide range of environments? If you're looking at certain plant phenotypes, so plant structure, height, width, branching, um, does the plant consistently produce those phenotypes in the field to allow for ease of harvest or standardization of field layout? And choosing those chemotypic and phenotypic consistencies is really important in hemp. Conventional breeding is really where all plant breeding started. And so in conventional breeding, we are developing new varieties of plants by using older tools and natural processes. So we're taking two plants, we're crossing them, and we are selecting for relevant characteristics. For those of you with a, a background in genetics or an understanding of genetics, these would be traditional Mendelian genetics, um, yellow potted peas combined with green potted peas to see how the peas turn out at the end, and then you know selecting the varieties that, you, that represent the characteristics that you're looking for. Within um, the cannabis industry, it's very straightforward. You, Cross two plants with advantageous or desirable characteristics, and then you grow out their offspring from seed to determine which offspring have those traits. And this produces a range of variation and a range of different characteristics to select for or select from in your future development. A step beyond conventional breeding um, is molecular breeding. And in this case, we're going to cover market marker assisted breeding. Conventional breeding. Um, has the disadvantage of being slow. You have to breed plants, you have to grow them to fruition, you have to evaluate them for production, and then make your selections. But in molecular breeding, we can use genetic markers and we can select plants based on the presence of these markers or pieces of their genome. And to us, this signifies the presence of an area in the genome which is conveying a desired trait or a characteristic or genotype. Let's use um, minor cannabinoids as an example, we want to optimize CBG production. So we would use marker assisted breeding to locate the presence of the genome responsible for producing CBG. And we would focus on replicating that by screening a large number of plants based on their DNA or RNA for a desired trait. We can select for specific cannabinoids under this production method, and then we can test the seedlings to determine which synthesize the cannabinoids without having to flower the plants. And so rather than waiting for the final COA or growing out a whole plant and sending flower samples away, we're able to analyze the seedlings at a very small age and expedite the process. What this means for you as a grower is that we're getting new products um, to the market faster. And this is supporting our growers because it's getting them things that are innovative, novel, and allowing them to produce them and sell them much more quickly than we could with conventional breeding. So how do we validate that breeding is working or marker assisted breeding is working. And um, Front Range Biosciences uses a, a process of field trials. So this is an example of field trials from 2019. We had trials in Western North Carolina. We had some in the, the Piedmont area of North Carolina, and we had some located in the coastal Gulf Coast region of Alabama. These three locations represented diverse climates and soils and also various farming methods. We had flood irrigated soil, we had drip, plastic culture with sandy soil. We had some organic production. We had some container production. And what we were able to do is produce all of our varieties that we uh, believed would be successful in these environments, in this region, and we evaluated them 
um, from the lab through harvest. And at the end of the trial, we were able to determine who the winner was for optimal production for the southeastern United States. And the foundation of these field trials was the development of those varieties through marker-assisted breeding. There are some challenges in developing new varieties. Um, we need a reliable industry standard so that we are producing the varieties consistently using the same techniques and laboratory methodologies and same evaluate, evaluation tools so that we know we're comparing apples to apples. Um, seed certification is another area. Um, we're looking um, at um, you know, national protocols, state-by-state -state protocols for seed certification, and there are different rules in different states for how seed needs to be certified, how it needs to be evaluated, and how it needs to be labeled. And it's important to understand what those certifications are. We are also evaluating the stability of traits. So can a trait um, that is desirable be established and recreated, if you will, in a genetic line over time? Is the trait something that um, shows up every other generation? Is the trait something that only shows up in male versus female plants? Um, and the stability of those traits, whether they are stable or not, represents a challenge in developing new varieties. Clean germplasm is another area where we're looking at um, germplasm being disease-free, uh, whether so that we're not incorporating you know, issues into the genetic line. Regional performance is also another challenge in the United States. If plant breeding largely occurs in a single region and plants are being evaluated for production in a single region, then they're really only being optimized for one region of production. In the case of Front Range Biosciences, we evaluate our varieties throughout the United States and we have trials in the Pacific Northwest, the Southeast, the Northeast, the Midwest, the Southwest, so that we know our varieties perform successfully in a wide variety of conditions and a wide range of um, climate and uh, local, regional, microclimatic conditions. We also want to look at efficient methods for scaling production. So how do we get these seeds to you? How do we get these clones to you? How do we upscale production in a way that allows for quality to be maintained while also producing the quantity that growers desire? And this is an ever-changing target, you know, as new technologies become available, as different greenhouse production methodologies become available, we will continue to incorporate these methods into our production models to make sure that we can get the quantities that our growers want to the grower. Um, that's the presentation that I have for you today. Thank you all for taking 15 minutes to spend some time with me and learn about our genetics program at Front Range Biosciences. Again, my name is Megan Coneybeer, and I'm the technical agronomist from Front Range, and my email address is there on the screen, as well as the Front Range website. If you guys have any questions or would ever like to reach out um, and learn more about Front Range Biosciences, please feel free to do so. And thank you for joining us at NOCO.